Second argument that I discussed was the moral argument for God's existence. It goes like this. If God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Two, objective moral values and duties do exist. Three, therefore, God exists. Now, what makes this little argument so powerful is that it's not only logically ironclad, but also that people generally believe both of its premises. In fact, Dawkins himself appears to be committed to both of its premises. With respect to premise one, Dawkins informs us, and I quote, there is at bottom no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. We are machines for propagating DNA. It is every living object's sole reason for being. But although Dawkins says that there is no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference, the fact is that Dawkins is also a stubborn moralist. For example, he declares himself mortified that the Enron executive, Jeff Skilling, uh, regards Dawkins' book, The Selfish Gene, as his favorite book because uh, of its perceived social Darwinism. Dawkins calls compassion and generosity noble emotions. He denounces the doctrine of original sin as morally obnoxious. He vigorously condemns such actions as the harassment and abuse of homosexuals, the religious indoctrination of children, the Incan practice of human sacrifice, and prizing cultural diversity over the interests of Amish children. He even goes so far as to offer his own revised version of the Ten Commandments as a guide for moral behavior, all the while marvelously oblivious to the contradiction with his own stated ethical subjectivism. So it is remarkable that Dawkins seems to be committed to both of the premises of the argument. Now, in his survey of arguments for God's existence, Dawkins touches on a sort of moral argument, which he calls the argument from degree. But it bears little resemblance to the argument presented here. We're not arguing from degrees of goodness to some highest good. Rather, we're arguing from the objectivity of moral values and duties to their foundation in reality. And Dawkins himself does seem to believe in the existence of objective moral values and duties. It's hard to believe that all of Dawkins' heated moral denunciations and affirmations are really intended to be no more than his subjective opinion, as if to whisper an aside, I, I don't really think that uh, homosexual uh, discrimination or child abuse are wrong. It, it's just my opinion. Do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. There's no moral objectivity. The problem is, however, that the affirmation of objective moral values and duties is incompatible with his atheism. For on naturalism, we are just animals, and animals are not moral agents. On the atheistic view, human beings are just animals, and animals have no moral obligations to one another. When a lion kills a zebra, it kills the zebra but it doesn't murder the zebra. When a great white shark forcibly copulates with a female, it forcibly copulates with her, but it does not rape her, for there is no moral dimension to these actions. They are neither prohibited nor obligatory. So Dawkins affirms both of the premises of the moral argument, and therefore on pain of irrationality, he is committed to the argument's conclusion, namely that God exists. 